Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of World Explorers. I almost forgot our name there. I'm joined as always with mm. Isaac. Say hello. Hello. And Isaac, of course, is going to be providing us with our prompt for what we're doing this this week. So what you got for us? World of Dragons. Ah, uh, we're embracing the dragons. Now I'm thinking, like, I again, my mind went to just your normal fantasy world, but then I said, what if the world was primarily dragons? Like, this has been done before, um, like, with something like, uh, Spyro. Yeah. And I haven't read Wings of Fire, but I... I've never even heard of that, so... Oh. <laughs> um, it, it's a book about dragons, and I don't know if that's... If the, if it's mainly dragons, I haven't heard a ton about it. But uh, I was thinking, um, what kind of world would it be? Legitimately, what would it, would it legitimately be if the world was Only primarily dragons? dragons I mean, as we, like, we could go really extreme here and have like everything's themed around dragons. So the trees look dragon, the plants look dragon-like, the the animals, even if they're not dragons, they they're dragons. That like even Ooh, the clouds so like, are in shapes of dragons. It's just all. Okay, dragons. so like everything is like draconic. Yeah, that's an interesting word. Well, it before. basically means things are dragonish. Huh. I didn't know there was a word to describe that, so that's interesting. Yeah, it's uh, draconic, and it's uh, basically means like. Things are dragonish. I don't know how else to put it. Okay, so we're building a world that's like a hundred percent draconic now. Sounds like iconic. Yes, the draconic dragon. realm. Yeah. This is probably gonna be one of the uh, weirdest. More. I was gonna say more normal. Is it? <laughs> you you call like well, a clouds flying through the sky all look like your tree looks <laughs> dragon like, or maybe they just have properties of dragon. I was thinking more like properties of dragons, or maybe and not, and not that everything looks like a dragon, but maybe um, like on a tree, the bark is somewhat less like bark and more like scales? wooden scales. Yeah, wooden scales. And scale. uh, perhaps it like bends and curves, and the leaves are like. Uh, for, I'm envisioning like a palm tree for some reason, but like the leaves would be like. Uh, Pretty Bendy, much, uh, the and I'm bark, say a the bark of the palm. I feel like the bark of the pl of a palm, but in like the shape of a willow, maybe. Maybe something kind of like, or an oak, or something grip, something along that line. And then maybe the clouds, instead mm -hmm. of rain, they have like fire, so it just rains fire. Or is that too hellish? No, I feel like that might be taking it a little too far. Okay. I think there should still be, like, normal water Maybe and stuff. the clouds are just, like, they look like fire, but they rain normal. Or the water's red, which is not blood, it's fire, guys. <laughs> it doesn't rain. Blood. Maybe. I was trying to, I was mainly thinking, my main idea coming to this was what kind of a world and, uh, and societies would arise if it was primarily, like, it was like if you swapped out humans for dragons. Oh, like, I mean, like what kind of uh, civilizations would be built if everybody was is like was uh, gigantic, strong, could fly, breathe fire, and may or may not have had opposable thumbs, depending on what kind yeah, of dragons. Yeah, I was about to say, with. there's, there's the the biggest issue with having the dragons is. I, I, I hate to admit it, but the humans only have two things going for them. One is our ability to use language, and two is our opposable thumbs. That's it. That's all we've got in life. <laughs> Th those are our okay, two... Okay, so now we need to decide to whether or not the dragons have language. I mean, if they're gonna be this crazy big society, the main creatures of this world, if the only creature of the world, I think they should have language. Yeah, I that's like what that's I was important. thinking. So at this point, the only advantage humans have are thumbs. Now, do the dragons have thumbs? Uh, I feel like they wouldn't be dragons if they did, in a way. Like, it feels wrong to give them opposable thumbs. I mean, sometimes, it depends. Like, I've seen a lot of dragons where uh, they may not have, like, exactly, like, thumbs like humans do, but their claws can still function as hands. They're still able to grab 
things like, and maybe use a quill or something. They're kind of like the falcon claws, where they, you know, like, falcons have that Yeah, almost claw. like talons. Yeah, almost. talons, that's it, talons. I feel like they have, like, ta- grippy talons that... Uh, I guess if you if you this society would learn quite quickly how to use the talents to do other things, and you know they might have different their tools would look different from ours to compensate for the fact that they have talents and stuff. So I don't know exactly. Uh, how, so I guess for writing, their maybe their uh, their pencil is bigger, but it has a thin top. But like the hand, so you have like a really thick, easy to grip tube thing and then the lead's just inside it so they can still write small things but the grip thing they're gripping is really is a lot bigger so that way they can grip it easier with their talons stuff like that yeah so they can, so they kind of have opposable thumbs but not really not not to the extent we do but kind of yeah closer, closer but closer. they're still capable of grabbing and manipulating things with their claws they just can't do it as well as we could as humans but yeah they be like they might not be able to twirl a baton but they can still pick up uh, a baton pick up a baton, uh, pick up like a brick and start laying bricks on a building yeah, yeah assuming yeah. they even have bricks would they still live in houses well if they're in advance like you know, they have language everything they're intelligent i imagine they would construct their own uh buildings but the buildings um, would be different yeah, was... from ours, just due to their size, their oh, yeah. abilities and stuff. So how about we talk about yeah, like, that? Like, imagine what would happen if, like, we could fly. If we could suddenly fly, how different would our buildings be? I feel like, like we'd have more open, bigger spaces, but with just a lot of us mm-hmm. living in it together. Yeah. yeah, and it's not like we would, like, remove stairs, because... Uh, sometimes it's like if you've injured your wing, suddenly you can't climb upstairs. Or if it's, uh, or sometimes you would need a much wider space to be able to fly up to, um, I, uh, up from, I like they uh, might have, our they might have, uh, parkour platforms in a way. So they have bigger gaps Maybe. between their platforms, so they kind of just jump up, and so that way they don't take up as much space as, like, a stairway would. Yeah, and I was thinking, I was thinking like maybe they would still have a stairway purely because if they were to need to fly somewhere, uh, from like an, uh, across floors or across platforms, or whatever, they would need to open up their wings, and that takes up a large amount of space. Yeah. So wouldn't it take less space to just make a narrow staircase for them to climb up? Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, maybe a staircase is actually easier. And then of course you'd yeah. have a. Uh doorways on second floors and third floors and stuff so you could fly in and out from to different floors but yeah i would be yeah. right it would make sense to have just a stairway versus flying up and, uh, and i imagine for the most part their doors might not even be doors it might just be like doorways like there's no hinges or or anything on a lot of doors unless it was Water like and rain and what? stuff you'd want to keep that out still on the it's true day. Maybe it's like dog. I feel like it's like dog doors, doggy doors, where you uh. It's where like you just push your up. head through and it opens up, and then when yeah. you after you've gone through, it slams into the person behind you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, doors slam in our faces all the time. I've been slammed in the face by doors, so it's just the same thing. It's the same problem. It's just it goes up and then down. Plus, so I feel I. But doggy doors seem to make sense, and then they could still have uh, bolts, which uh, would be dragons like, with doggy doors. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They'd probably have a uh, giant nails, which they can like pull in and out to lock them, which are easy to grip. So they have very nails with very big heads, so they could just pick it up Maybe. or like unscrew it up and then uh, uh, to lock it. So that way you can lock a door if you want to. I imagine they would have more of a lever system. Lever would work too, uh, because like that's something where it's easy. You don't even need to grip it. Like something with paws could use a lever system, yeah. Where you just push down on it, and door opens, which that already exists in yeah, but you, real life. Yeah, but you have to be. You have to think. You can't think too advanced, like electrical stuff or things, because well, wires are. The hard. lever isn't electrical. Yeah, I know, but there's, I don't know, the way you made it sound made it sound more like a push and a button that you press and you get an automatic door, which I don't think these guys are at that level. Mm-hmm. I don't think they ever can yeah. be because of the amount of 
intricacy that goes into doing stuff like that that you kind of can't do with talons. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I was thinking maybe if they could just, like, grab a handle on their door. Maybe they can't lock it or latch it, but they can still, like, pull it shut. I mean, you can latch. With the handle. You, speaking of the handle, you can lock it that way. Like, you can get latches that cover it. If you could make it so the handle, you could twist. Yeah. Where the handle is, like, it. a... It's like a ring and not, like, a door handle that we have, if it's more of a ring. Yeah. Uh, that they can grab and twist. That could work. The issue comes if you want to lock it and unlock it from either side of the door. I'm not sure how that would work. But maybe they don't need to lock doors. Maybe everybody's very trustworthy of each other. Maybe. I mean, that sounds like a boring world. Not gonna lie. Until suddenly your protagonist is an untrustworthy person. <laughs> it's the first dragon to be untrustworthy. <laughs> it's been centuries so why of Why should peace. I be helpful to society? Why can't I just go and, you know, do everything? Um, cause it wrong. Oh, I yes. never thought of that. <laughs> Imagine if that it was that easy. Someone just complaining about things and just look at them and is like, "Yeah, but it's wrong." And they're like, "Oh, I guess you're right," and then they just drop it. <laughs> the world would be a better place. I mean, what do you think that hashtag stop bullying signs is supposed to be? Yeah, but they won't work. Yeah, but people keep putting them up anyway. They don't work. <laughs> Anyways, we got off topic. Back to dragon. The our dragon. Our drag. I I don't know how to pronounce that word. Draconic. 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 It's, draconic. it's iconic and dragon combined, right? Draconic. Yeah. What do dragons eat in this world? Uh, good question. I imagine they would. I don't know. Like, I think we we might need to discuss, like, the rest of the world for that. If it's, like, like oh, if there's a bunch of greenery, maybe they eat you know, maybe they eat vegetables. Maybe they eat animals. Maybe they eat both. Mm. Um, Do we like... Are there any other intelligent creatures in this world, or is it I just dragons that are... I think that would the point of us creating a draconic world if we had other intelligent creatures. I think it should True. just be the dragons for this one, at least. Dragons are the dominant race. Yeah, they they remember we're we're this in this world we're just replacing humans with dragons. Yeah. So. So. Oh, so I guess all other creatures like, um, like cows would be, just, meat for them to eat. What what I think would be interesting is probably sheep would not be something that ever got domesticated. Just because, they I can't imagine a dragon wanting wool. Or even wanting to eat something which had the wool on it, especially if you had things like cows and pigs and stuff, which would be so you much easier to eat. burn the wool off. If I've learned anything from Spyro, it's that you can just burn the wool off of a sheep. Yeah, but I don't know. I feel like uh, if you had your preference of having to double cook your sheep, you had to burn the wool off and then cook it again, or, I don't know, I feel like the wool would be more annoying than anything else compared to... To, compared to the cow and pig, which you just, like, blow a bit of fire and eat whole. You don't have to worry about getting any hair in your, uh, digestive system. Or at least not as much as a sheep would. But I guess domestication might look different. Like, the animals would be more... They wouldn't be what they are today. For one, cows would never have the desire to... Ha they wouldn't have to be milked constantly. Which is something domesticated cows have to be, is they have to be milked twice a day or one day, depending on the type of cow. Just because we've domesticated them to the point where they have, they they now rely on humans to be milked. If we wouldn't milk them, if humans didn't exist, cows would be screwed over because they need us to milk them. So for, that would be gone. Cows would have never developed that. Sheep would auto shear their wool still. So that's another thing we domesticated sheep we did to them, is we made it so they keep their wool, so they never shear it, they have to have humans shear them. That's something we did to them. They didn't originally do that. So, sheep would auto shear... What if, what if dragons like milk? How would a dragon milk? <laughs> Those talons are well, not milking a cow. Well, after you, when you go and you kill the cow, you just use your talons to poke a hole in the udders and it, it squeeze it out like a bag. Yeah, 
Yeah, but still, that wouldn't have the cow always constantly producing milk, because the cow only... Yeah. It's, it's dead. But my point stands that the, the animals would not be as domesticated. They'd be domesticated differently. I feel like they'd be fatter and more meaty. It might even be the point where wool, sheep stop producing wool, or they produce, like, a light coat, just because of uh, natural selection. Yeah. That type of thing. So you'd have, I feel like you'd have bigger, fatter, more meaty animals do the natural selection with these dragons, who I'm assuming are raising them. Which brings the idea Probably. of crops. How are they feeding them? Or are they just letting them graze? They might just let them graze. So what do they do for winter? Do they not have winter? Uh, maybe, okay, so we need to incorporate, like, how does dra the main dragons affect the world, and also... Well, of course, we gotta have a magic system, so what if I mean, not there's fire... Dragons can be scientific. Oh, well, that's gonna make things more boring. Well, it's... it's, a, it's This is just a world where dragons replace humans. It's not where magic is a thing. We're talking about a giant, fire-breathing reptile that can fly. There's I feel like there's some magic there, involved. No, there's actual uh, evidence of those creatures actually existing in the world. So there's scientific abilities for those things to exist. They were just, dinosaurs and dragons were considered the same thing, because there wasn't a word for dinosaur. So when people said dragon, they said they meant dinosaurs, and when they say dinosaurs, it could be a dragon. Well, I've, I looked it up, and the word dragon comes from uh, dracon, which means large serpent or snake. But yeah, okay, I, so how else do we make this world interesting? I mean, we're just doing, we're just replacing dragons with, well, I, I mean, there, there's the flying aspect, we could dwell on that, and their ability to travel places faster, and do they make sky bases, or do they interact with the clouds in some way because of their constant flight? Have they learned, maybe because they're in the air constantly, they've learned to manipulate clouds, so they could bring rain, or something like that. Uh, so much for no magic system. It's not. It's not magic. It'd be. We'd have to think of something, a scientific reason for it to happen, or at least pretend it's slightly scientific, and let the real scientists work out the details. So, so we you know, run around in circles in the sky, and then condense the clouds so that they squeeze out all the water. Yeah, wing span and the power in those wings. I mean, dragons are huge. The fact they're able to lift themselves up at the ground just means shows how powerful their wingspans are. And if you get a group of dragons, whatever that's called, uh, you could do Is that some a things. Flock? With, uh, I don't Her? know what dragons are called. I don't know what a group of dragons are called. I looked it up. It's a thunder. It's called a thunder? It's called a thunder. That's cool. That is way cooler than heard. Yeah, I approve of that. Art. What about different kinds of dragons? Is that a thing that uh, exists in this world? Well, if they're like humans, there should be like different kinds, but they can all breed together. So in the sense that even the smallest dragon and the biggest dragon can hook up and be fine and like and have kids and stuff. They can raise a family in that sense, which well, would produce a wide range of dragon types or way dragons look, I guess I could say. I was thinking not so much, like, size and, like, shape differences, but more like uh, this dragon has is the stereotypical dragon four legs, wings, uh, scales, a few horns, and then the tail, maybe with a blade or spiky club or something on the end of it. Yeah. But then this dragon over here might have um, only two legs, uh, no wings, but can still fly because it like heats itself up and flies that way. And it's a hot uh, air balloon dragon. It just fills air. itself with hot air and floats. It can't really that direct is... itself anywhere, but it can float. Yep, it was <laughs> not exactly the best flyer. I feel like <laughs> there like should be some. Wiggle its way to the air. I feel like there should be some standards to what a dragon is, because dragons. I think the main things about dragons is that they're four-legged. Uh, they have tail, wings, and teeth. There are plenty of two-legged dragons out there. Yeah, well, they still have, like, their arms, which are kind of, they kind of resemble more leg-like usually than hands. I mean, there are some, it's, the thing is, there is dragons, one of the main things about them is that they have a very large lack of definition. Like, True. 
like a, you can have um, a dragon and you can give it eight legs, remove the horns, uh, two sets of wings, and um, take away its ability to breathe fire, and people will still call it a dragon. I feel like the things that I have always seen related to dragons is that it has four limbs, whether that be two arms and two legs. or something. It's always just four. I've never heard of a six-legged dragon before. Uh, it's okay. always got wings, is their main thing, is that they've got those, and they're always scaled. You don't, you I never hear about a dragon that has of, human skin. I look up a bunch of pictures of dragons with no legs and no wings. That's a worm. <laughs> or a snake. There's a dragon with uh, only legs. It might have, like, claws or whatever on its wings. But it's primarily only got, like, two legs and then its wings. I can give you many small, not very serpent-like creatures who are still considered dragons. I know. I even if Even if you look at images, the dragon still has some features, which is mostly the ability of flight, something that allows them to fly. In Chinese dragons, it's their ears that allow it. Like, they have wavy ear things that act like it's weird. They're very thin, and I don't get how they act as wings, but they do. Makes no sense. And then in the classic dragon that we would know, because European and Western culture just has the two wings on the side. Yeah, I would say they give them all tails, because dragons without tails don't look nearly as much like dragons anymore. I don't know about the four limbs thing. I've never heard of like, a dragon that has we more than have... four, but I've never seen one that has less. It's got less, it's just a flying snake. I mean, yeah, okay, so when you say limbs, are you, uh... Yeah, I'm referring to, Hold like, on. they can have... Some of them are wings a bit more and... arm-like. And some, yeah, I see one image, like, some consider the wings as arms, so as part of the limbs. But normally they have feet, two feet, and either four feet or two feet and two arm-like things. But some people do consider their wings as just their arms, and therefore they just have the two feet and then the wings as arms. I'm just, I'm just saying it's like we could we could have a large variant of dragons, because yeah. why not? We could have. Yeah, and I'm just saying we need some things that define what a dragon is, and I was just giving suggestions of what those could be to limit the, um, the dragon amount. Maybe. Okay, so scales... I don't know if I agree with the whole limbs and amount of limbs thing. Ah, that bothers me, but okay, we'll go with it. It has to have four legs and two wings, a tail. Well, it's like, it, you can count the two wings as limbs, which means I guess it has four to six, but in the sense that it has at least legs or something else to land on. It does not slither like a snake on the ground. It is something okay. that allows them to walk upon the ground. Okay. So I keep on wanting to go to a magic system because that's always where my mind goes. Yeah, but dragons is... are, it's so cliche for dragons to have dragons in the magic world. I know. I'm like, yeah, dragons pretty much always have magic systems because there's so many different ways you can go with a dragon's magic system. Usually, like, the basic idea is they breathe fire. Okay. But then you can say, what else can they do? They breathe fire. Uh... In Spyro, they all have their different elements. In uh, something like Aragon, yeah, but you, see, you're the... assuming that a dragon's breath isn't scientific, isn't something that can be scientific. You're assuming it's based around magic. My... Well, it is something that can be scientifically done, but at the same time, it's not. I'm just saying that you can, if you want to take it further and make it more interesting, you can build on that and do something that is more magic-based. Where's the challenge in that? The challenge is making these non-magical cre- these magical creatures and actually saying, actually, they're scientific creatures, and they're living in this world, which is an actual, like, an actual, it's an actual thing. So, everything's kind of explained how a dragon can do this. Like, if they manipulate clouds, it's because of the way their wingspans works that allows them to do it. Uh, their breath, that they have internal organs that just allow them to freeze, or do ice blasts or fire or whatever. Because there is some evidence of animals that could breathe fire like that don't exist anymore. What about ice? Can are there animals that can breathe ice? Yeah, there's. I'm sure there's a scientific way that they can. That's that's the thing. Okay. That's the thing. They do it. It's just it's not magic. It's science. Okay, so we got 
scientific dragons. I'm going to yeah. say that one of them is a chemist. You can have a chemist dragon if you want. We just have to keep in mind how they're yeah. making this stuff to do chemistry. Yeah, and I mean, it's like, it wouldn't be hard for them to heat stuff up. No, that would be easy. That'd be easy. Well, it's more like the containers. I'm wondering what they're using as containers for stuff. I'm not, uh, I'm not sure how talents would work for glass work, but I guess I could do metal work pretty easily. Yeah, metal work and glass work I see being really easy for them. Okay. Uh, woodworking would be actually with because of their claws. You scratch. Assuming your claws are sturdy, like they could like scratch and carve and they see their claws. It almost makes me feel uh, like their uh, writing is more stone wooden base, uh, kind of like uh, the original Chinese where wood wood slates which they were painted on, but for these guys it's wood slates which they carve into. And yeah. That's what they write on. I mean, you could also make it so that they could paint if they really wanted to, but true, painting probably would be not hard. Maybe that's what they use the wool for. They that's their paintbrush. I mean, I was thinking they could also use their talons as paintbrushes in the way too. Like you. Could yeah, that too. That would, also, that would probably work that. better. They just have finger paints. Yeah, they're all just thing. It's all just a bunch of preschoolers finger painting. Hey, I would finger paint still if I ha owned the proper paint to do so. <laughs> Finger painting is fun, but it does. I like mean not just, getting messy. Yeah, well, but I don't know. Messes are fun too. But okay, so what else can we build on with the dragons? Uh, we can go into more of their uh, their breaths and what their ability to do that. I feel like ice is very lot. I I can't I can't think of a scientific way to really do lightning without killing a dragon. That would just normally kill it. So I think that uh, one's uh, part of their body is like creating a static charge. It's like rub it, their muscles are rubbing to some things together in Awful. their neck, and then uh, they spit it out. I don't know. That's probably yeah, very very is. possible. Um, you but... can also do ones that just breathe air, like really high get high breaths of air that just annihilate everything in its path. S especially if they yeah. ate something smelly for breakfast. So. Alright, so we'll call the lightning ones uh, thunders. We'll call the... You can't call uh, any of them thunders because a pack of dry, uh, I know. Dragons okay, so we'll call them uh, lightning dragons because we're boring <laughs> like that. And we've got <laughs> the inferno dragons. Because we're not the... that boring. <laughs> And then the ice ones, uh, we'll call them the, the hail dragons. dragons. The hail. And then for, I don't know, hail, ice storm, tempest. Good go go. Um, the icicle dragons. The icicle dragons, yes. Icicle and dragons. then, as for the wind dragons, we shall call them wind bags. <laughs> wind bags. They're just the <laughs> goofiest group of dragons you've ever. Their pa their abilities are terrifying, but when you hear their names you're like, "Are we sure we're scared of these dragons?" I don't think we're scared of these dragons. Fear me for I am a wind bag. Turn back now or you shall be blown away. Yeah. <laughs> so the question I want I want to establish this. Do they actually herd or like have um, have herds of animals or is this just one where like all animals have become the sense that deer are like sheep and cows and stuff are just another type of deer where you have to go out and hunt them and these dragons hunt just constantly I feel like it would be more like you gotta go out and hunt them Yeah, that's and I, don't, I imagine like they may, they may not be water dragons but they could like dive under the water or grab fish, fish and yeah, come out yeah fish could be a food source yeah, fish could be a very uh, plentiful source that just keeps on. I mean, on. do we want to go and make this hit really close to home and have uh, e ecology uh, issues, ecosystem issues with like fish running out or over hunting of animals has caused them to the lack of them finding food and they have issues with that thing? I don't know. I could tell you. That we have an overpopulation of deer where I live. Yeah, but in a lot of places that isn't the case. And also we have yeah. just the world in general has an overpopulation of humans. What imagine with dragons which are infinitely bigger, eat a lot more. Imagine if they got even like a tenth of the amount of humans we have, what that would do to the world supply wise. At least food wise. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I 
don't know if we want to go. I mean, just think of what us humans can do to fish populations. Imagine dragons. Switches out with dragons. What? There, there wouldn't be fish. Fish are laying a lot more eggs in this world. <laughs> is that is that what we're going with? Just fish. I don't know. Fish have become rats. Uh, well, here's the thing. What if they have those uh, uh problems and everybody starts going hungry? Like, I wasn't imagining it. it like we've spent like I wasn't imagining it as if we had spent as much time on the world as the dragons have. I was just imagining there not being nearly as many dragons. Like there's a city by the ocean maybe and then if, it, if you get hungry you just fly over to the water, dive in, grab a shark if you really want to and eat it. Yeah, but eventually the world's the dragons are going especially if the dragons aren't threatened by anything. They don't really have much to threaten them. They're going to they're this going is to- they're going to reproduce. This is the problem for future generations. Yes, well, we are world explorers and we explore all timelines. We're in that future generation uh, now. The dragons are going hungry, Isaac. What are they going to do? They're going to become vegetarians. I'm not sure that's going to agree with them very much. They're going to eat each other. I, I, I don't, don't think know. that's going to solve anything either. <laughs> I mean, what do you do with the what do you do at that point? Like there's no food, I mean, and if you were to try and breed right them, now. people would just say, no, I'm hungry now, I want to eat the food now, yeah. and they wouldn't end up, there's a good chance they wouldn't end up breeding them, and plus, you need to breed a lot more than we are. Um, well, I feel like I feel like this is where we would get a better story, maybe, of a dragon trying to save, like, the lap, trying to teach its society to start breeding animals or domesticating animals I should say and has like a secret bunker where it's storing a bunch of cows and trying to keep other dragons from finding it out and like to do it in secret to produce food and of course Keeping that cause up. yeah and that of course causes issues when people find out they would be upset with him but at the same time he's trying to help the problem but maybe and that's good would immediately lose all of his food. Yeah. Like, oh, and then we go and take it and be like, I'm hungry, give me food, and then yeah. they steal it from him. Yeah, but also there's probably a guilt going on with him because he feels like he's hurting, he's uh, hoarding food, even though that's not what he's doing, but there's still like, especially when you have a bunch of other voices in your head saying, oh, there's so little to eat and stuff, and you have a basement full of food, even though you know in the long term it's better not to share it, in the short term you want to share it, because you feel, you feel bad otherwise. And then everyone makes you feel worse because you're hoarding it all, and then they steal your food, and then you feel even worse because they stole your food, and then they kick you out, so you feel even worse. Yeah, lots. Of- oh, this is this guy's got a rough life. It does doesn't he? It's not. It's not a plus. Well, I mean, it's not a pleasant world. People, who, dragons who are hungry, I'm assuming are not the kindest of creatures. I certainly am not kind when I'm hungry. Or I'm less kind, I should say. I don't think I've ever been hungry enough to be outright vicious towards someone, but... It is harder to be nice when your a basic need is, isn't being satisfied. So what are these larger towns looking like, out of curiosity, that these dragons are living in? Down, I imagine. I mean, I don't know how common, like, fire breath is. If it's something that they have 100% control over, or if it's you sneeze, you breathe fire. I feel like over time they'd learn to control it better. Like they'd start having classes in the school system that teaches you how to use whatever breath you happen to have better. Well, what happens if you're a toddler and you're running around and it's a similar situation where we got to keep keep our toddlers out of spark plugs and stuff uh, and out of, and out of um, out outlets and things? What happens if like a toddler dragon decides, hmm? You know what? I'm going to breathe fire on the wall just to see what happens. Like, if we were to they'd be like, I'm going to throw a rock at the window just to see if it breaks. I, that actually I, happened I, with my brother. Oh, he just threw a rock at the window because he was curious. If it yeah, just to see if it would break. I'm assuming it did. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, I guess, yeah, I guess stone makes sense. They'd have fireproof buildings just because they'd have to or brick might be common of uh, things all things that they could easily i guess they could pick up stones pretty quickly and easily 
and then you see yeah. like stuff beaver dam it but with stones well it, if you could breathe fire how would you incorporate that into construction uh so you could do things that need to i feel like you know how we have like ceramic pots and stuff like that yeah. But you can do really thick ones that don't break very easily. Or brick. You get, like, clay. You can almost build out the house. I feel like you could have actually very integrate houses more so than we do because they can shape it up and then they can bake it properly with their fire breath without needing, like, a giant furnace. So the reason why we don't do giant, elaborate things out of, uh, say, metal or metal houses, that'd be cool. Or things like that. There's a train now. <laughs> metal houses and stuff like that is because the furnaces, you'd need to make some of that stuff. We just can't physically make those furnaces. But for a dragon, that's that's they, that's not a problem. So if they want to do a house completely made out of metal, they could shape it really easily and stuff like that with their fire breath, especially considering they can just hop right into the center of it because they won't burn. Yeah, they would also need to go and mine a lot of uh, metal for, the, uh, for that uh, and get a bunch of ores. Yeah, they. I guess digging would be something they'd be... Mining would be more important for them. Yeah, I imagine they could manage it fairly well. I don't know if, like... So I don't... Uh, with some things, like uh, breaking down trees, sure, I can see a dragon being powerful enough to take down a tree. Yeah. What about digging through a solid rock with their claws? I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, I don't think so. Either. They might be able to do it a little bit, but it would be like us trying to dig through dirt with our hands. It's very impractical when you could I mean, uh, take a shovel to it. I guess the... How do you do gunpowder? How's gunpowder performed? You kill a creeper. I meant in real life, <laughs> not in my I class. don't know how, like, where you get gunpowder. Or explosives in general could be something that they they use because they could survive explosives better. Okay, so it's just like sulfur, charcoal, and potassium nitrate. So I feel like that's things they could get relatively easy. I feel like gunpowder might be something they have access to. Which would allow them to mine deeper and then they could get tools that would help them mine out yeah. the ores and stuff that they... What they want. Art but at the same time, like, if you were to use gunpowder to mine for a while, you would get very, you would get in there a little bit, but you wouldn't get very far. Uh, and you would need a lot of gunpowder to get to a point, it's like, before you can eventually get iron and stuff to make tools. And then once you've created those tools, what kind of a tool would a dragon use? Because they aren't going to have a pickaxe. Yeah, they are great. Like, what would they be using? I don't know, maybe they have things on their claw. I don't, I don't oh, know. Oh, what if their what if their tails ha uh, had, like, spiky clubs, or some of them did? Like, some yeah, dragons did, that maybe not all dragons. Enough. I mean, I guess we use, it just take humans are impressive in that they use a pickaxe to get through most earth. I'd imagine that a dragon could do it, and then eventually they would get to the point where they have enough metal to make tools that fit maybe the tail or their claws that would allow them to dig even easier because yeah well, I, I, feel like we're, right now we're this, I feel like you're still thinking human strength these aren't human strength these are dragon strength they're they're like all muscle yeah that's what i'm saying but even if it's all muscle i'm saying a claw would be difficult for them to uh dig with even in stone if they're go trying to dig through stone but if they had a tail that they could use as a wrecking ball yeah yeah, I feel like, yeah, mining, mining I think is something these dragons can do, and with their ability, so I feel like making stone houses, and maybe even metal houses, which might be a bit rare for like the rich, the richer dragons, or the higher up dragons, that would make sense. Yeah, and so I, so they would have stone, uh, stone houses most likely, because uh, one, that? fireproof, and two, if their egg tails can be used as wrecking balls to destroy stone easily... Why not? Uh, it wouldn't be uh, too difficult for them to obtain like st giant stone yeah. bricks and rocks. Yeah. So they just have cool. I things that I think they don't have are things like glass. Because I feel like they Why can not? make Why glass not? easily, but I don't feel like having things like glass windows makes much sense to them. 
Just cause, Why not? Uh, for one, you're big, and glass is easily broken by big things. Uh, two, we talk. Ah. Yeah, I feel like they uh, they maybe try it out, and eventually they'd be. This isn't working. Well, what if it was like um, metal bars, uh, like uh, and like a grid pattern for your window? But then you filled in the squares in the grid with glass panes. True, that might work. They just have like, st- smaller sections of glass and then stronger frames. Yeah, I think the reason why we don't do that is because the idea of lifting that to open up a window is ridiculous. But yeah, for a dragon, I mean, it's not. We don't generally damage our windows. Sometimes it happens, but usually... We don't break windows. Yeah. I've never broken a window, I can tell you that. My dad has a lawnmower. I don't know much more of how we would, like, world build this, if everything is the same as, like, a human world, but with just dragons. Anyways, we're going to be ending it here, so we're going to say goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah, it's the point where you say goodbye. 